Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be my out of box review for the HGUC Woundwart, the Gundam TR6 from Advanced Zeta here. Finally we get it in kit form, I never thought I'd see the day, but here we are, and I can only hope that Bandai will make more of these. That said, this was a P Bandai kit, and I can only assume that any of their further variations in the future will probably be P Bandai releases as well. That said, I think if you're a fan of Advanced Zeta or this design just in general, it's definitely worth picking up. Uh, hopefully you don't have to pay too terribly much for it, but assuming you can get it at even a relatively decent price, I would definitely say grab one, because like I said, it's just kind of a, a pretty amazing that Bandai even made this. So, uh, As always, huge thank you to US at Gundam Store for sponsoring this. If you guys are looking for a place to get P Bandai stuff, and you live in the US, you can get that at USA Gundam Store, uh, and you can use my coupon code there, ZakuRelius10, to save 10%. So, again, the link and all the info is down there in the description below the video. So, let's get to talking about this kit. It's great. It's very nice. It's an HG, so there are typical pros and cons of any HG kit. There's a few seam lines here and there, stickers here and there as well. Uh, even with the stickers, it's still missing little color apps, because if you guys are familiar with Advanced Zeta designs in general, they have a lot of little, small little color apps here and there and everywhere all over the place, so it makes sense that obviously those wouldn't all be able to be recreated, even including stickers here in 1144 scale. And speaking of the scale, this kit is pretty small, I want to say its overall height is probably similar to a regular uh, 18 meter tall Gundam, but just with its torso especially being so tiny uh, in there, its proportions are definitely very unique. Well, that's pretty obvious. So I suppose while we're on the subject, let's just do a little size comparison here. First off, so there's the RX-78 as well as the Advanced Hazel here for comparison. So. Uh, you can see it's kind of right about there in the middle. The Advanced Hazel is a little bit taller because of his high heels and all. Uh, and so it is actually taller than your standard 18 meter uh, Gundam there as you can see. But uh, yeah, those proportions just really kind of trick your eye there, don't they? So let's take an up close look at this beauty here, point out the stickers and talk a little bit about the articulation. So as obviously there's a sticker there for the head camera. There is also a sticker in for the eyes, although it's very hidden by this uh, just shape of the head there, but there is a sticker there in for the eyes. A sticker here for this front crotch piece there, the red with the yellow V in the center. That is a sticker. Little stickers here for the green cameras on the sides of the legs and here on the back as well there. These larger dark blue stickers there wrap around the little fins that are coming off the sides of the torso. And then one more camera sticker here on the back of the head as well. So that's it for the stickers, really not too bad. As you can see, I did put a few of the marking stickers on here as well. It does come with a set of marking stickers, basically there's Titan Test Team logos there that you can place around in different areas on the kit. There are a couple more stickers on the weapons, we'll come to that in a minute, but let's take a look at the articulation. So the head, because of the shape of the, or like the, how wide the head is, these kind of bits there on this, these side bits there on the side of the torso do kind of get a little bit in the way when you're wanting to put the head up. There are safety flags on the little tips of the yellow parts for this, but I just cut and sharpened those up a little bit. But all in all, you can get the head up pretty high. Again, you can barely see the eyes in there, but they are there and then down plenty there as well. So the head is not gonna be an issue at all. Now because this is such an odd design and it is a transforming kit, the articulation gets a little bit weird from there. So for the shoulders here, uh, that can swing forward and back. And as you can see, this part there is attached onto that. So that will swing along with that. Uh, and then you can bring the arm up just to about 90 degrees there. And that's about as high as you're going to get the arm, it seems, unfortunately. And we'll ignore this strange back bend of the elbow because again, it's for the transformation. So while it's in mobile suit mode, it basically just has about 90 degrees bend there in the elbow, so nothing really too terribly much. But the the way the wrist is, the wrist is sort of bent or like angled up a little bit, so you will get what appears to be a little bit more than 90 degrees, uh, just based on the shape of that. Interesting wrist joint for this, the hands will just plug straight in, not on a ball joint actually, just on a peg that just pops in there nice and securely, and then those will just rotate. But then we have uh, hinges in the wrists, so that's nice that the wrists are just uh, on hinges there. That's pretty cool. Makes for some pretty nice articulation. Obviously, you can see for the hands here, we have a nice, just very uh, stylistic hand there. It's very iconic to the artwork of the wound wart, so I'm really glad that those are included rather than just, just kind of standard HD holding hands. It's really cool that they include these. Of course, the fingertips are supposed to be red. You'll have to paint those yourself, obviously. There'll be a lot of little detail painting and everything that you'll have to do on the kit in general, but 
In the midsection, we have a little bit of articulation. It's kind of weird. You can kind of rotate it here. Uh, but again, just because of the transformation, it's a little bit wonky. So you can rotate that a little bit forward and back. Not really going to do anything there. But you can see, and this is actually according to the lore as well, the whole mobile suit is all kind of plugged around this kind of core central drum part there. And so the, all the different parts around that are meant to be able to be switched out. The legs, this uh, back skirt part, and then the torso and everything even as well are meant to be able to switch out, uh, to be able to be switched out uh, on that kind of core central unit there in the middle of the waist section. So obviously it doesn't really have much in terms of skirt armor. This part here at the front will move up and down very slightly, but not really for pretty much anything. And the part in the back will also move up and down. Again, that's pretty much just for the transformation. In mobile suit mode, it's just essentially just supposed to be like that. But nice color separation with the fact that we get a purple part there underneath that uh, will have the little uh, verniers, I should say, just poking out there on the top. And then up underneath, there's a little bit of detail up inside there as well. So you can see that up inside there. Very nice. And then for the legs, these will go out to the side to about there. That's going to be about it. And then forward and back, obviously not going to be a problem because there's nothing getting in the way of those. The knees are pretty interesting because they'll just bend like so. And just according to the transformation, they're supposed to bend all the way. So they'll have a full 180 degree bend there. And then here at the feet, you have this little bit that sticks out. That's to help it stand because it doesn't really particularly have feet. So but if you just want to have the kit airborne, you can just plop that in and then you don't have anything to worry about. Just no feet, no problem. There you go. Or if you do want to have it standing without the base, just pop that out and then it can stand perfectly fine as you saw before. So that's pretty nice. Uh, pretty much the only real seam line on this kit is going to be here on the front of this kind of lower leg part, just straight down the center of that. There's a big long seam. That's really going to kind of be the only one you're going to have to worry too much about. But that is there. And even with the no feet and huge thighs and huge back skirts sticking out the back there, it's relatively easy to just get it standing up there. It's not really a problem at all. Now for the other accessories for the kit, we do have an action base connector. And aside from the open hands, we do have a set of holding hands here, just like this, simple holding hands for the left and the right side. There's a couple parts that you'll use for the transformation. Uh, these will plug into the legs when it's in mobile, suit, uh, mobile armor mode. And then you'll basically replace the torso with this part. And you can see like there's the like head is kind of folded up inside of there. And it's just all the details molded in there. But you'll have a lot of painting to do if you want to paint that up to be accurate. Fortunately, this is not really very vis visible when it's in mobile armor mode, as you'll see here in a few moments. But uh, that is all there. It's just a kind of parts forming piece for that. We get just a simple base. And actually, we get two of these. So one is supposed to be for the mobile suit. And then one is for the rifle when it's in crow mode. So let's take a look at that. So here is the rifle in rifle mode. Very cool. For this very long part here sticking out the front, we've got two stickers that will make up the kind of dark purple part here for the edges on the top and bottom of that. And then there's a little green camera sticker for that one there as well. But this is just such a cool weapon. I just really like this a lot. It's really interesting, it's so unique and cool and very long. As you can see, it's much longer than the actual Gundam itself when it's at full length. So it's gonna be pretty big. Now, is it gonna actually be able to hold it very well is the problem. So you basically just pop the hand around the handle there and then kind of do your best to balance it and hold that up in a convincing way. As far as I can gather, in just kind of a standing pose like this, it's going to be looking a little bit wonky from this way, unless you pose it like this, where you can't really see how it's holding onto the rifle, and then it looks totally fine. Otherwise, there's a lot of other different ways that you can pose it where I think it does look convincing enough, while it doesn't really have to look very convincing from certain angles, as long as you have it posed in a certain way, it'll look totally cool. And the last thing we have here is a couple parts for uh, putting the rifle in crow mode, so we have a little cable for that, and then these parts which will replace couple parts here for that. So to transform it, we basically just need to take out the front blade parts and then separate this part here, this back part, which is this weird kind of very bug looking kind of arm, pull off this piece. And then this part here will attach onto the top of the shoulder and it doesn't really seem like a super strong connection. Plus it leaves this weird gap there at the top of the shoulder. So I don't really get what's with that. It's a bit odd. Now we'll plug our wire into here. Here's where those other option parts come into play. We need to pull off these parts here on the bottom, move these white parts from this piece onto this other piece. And then that makes it look kind of very, again, insect-like, like this big bug thing. It's like this piece we took off before, plug it into the back of here, and that's where our wire will plug into that smaller hole there. 
and then we'll plug this onto an action base inside there and here is how it's going to look kind of interesting very interesting indeed while I said the connection doesn't seem that good onto the shoulder it seems to be holding on there pretty well it's really not a whole lot of weight that it has to support with that uh, kind of weird arm thing sticking out the back and as you can see there's a lot of segments built into that but it really only bends at like two places so I think if this were a master grade or something it could bend at every single one of those segments it would look a lot more natural it looks a bit odd with just the two bends there uh, in that segmented part that looks like it should bend like five or six or seven times um, and then the wire is a, a little bit short really I think if you could replace that with your own if you can find one of the same gauge and everything that will work for you uh, I would recommend probably getting a long one. Depends on how, what you want to do with it. You just really can't get the the rifle there out too far away from the mobile suit with that very short wire. Uh, also, I haven't used the stand that were included. You can use it, but just for the fact that I'm having this on my rotating base here, uh, it just was easier for me to put these both onto the same stand using just the Action Base 5. But uh, again, you have the two separate stands that you can use for uh, having this posed up in this such way. But that said, it is very convincing. And again, it's it can look a bit odd. It all depends on your posing. I think you're just gonna have to be careful with how you pose the kit. Uh, if it's posed up in the right way and you kind of have everything looking uh, the right way, it looks fantastic. Even such things as having a short wire and having the segmenting of the part there attached onto the top of the shoulder being a little bit odd. All that stuff is pretty easy to ignore when you have this posed up in a really cool pose. It's just so striking and different and unique and it's great. I like it. And when it's transformed, here is how it's going to look in mobile armor mode. Very strange, and yeah, I don't really need to show you the transformation all step by step on camera, but it's really not all that complicated. If you are wanting to get the kit and you're worried about the transformation process, just follow the instructions. It's not difficult at all. Uh, you're just folding some stuff around and pulling some stuff off, reattaching some stuff. So you can see the, the transformation part, the parts forming part that replaces the torso is up inside here. So the uh, collapsed head is kind of there underneath this kind of main dome part, which which was the back skirt, which is now the front. The front skirt part, kind of dong part, is still sticking out the front there. The legs are folded up, and here are those fin parts we added onto the legs as well, sticking out. Uh, action base connector here attached onto the back, just so the action base will, uh, uh, the connector needs to go straight into the back there. Anyway, another thing about the mobile armor mode is some of you may be wondering if you can attach the long rifle onto this while it is in mobile armor mode. So the hand is underneath here, so you could, I suppose, sort of like hold onto the handle if you had that kind of holding onto the handle underneath there like that, and it could work, I suppose. Alternatively, if you wanted to try to attach this onto the top of the arm as if it was in like the crow mode, you can see the shoulder part is just there inside there. I did try that earlier and it didn't really work. It just doesn't really work with, with all this stuff kind of being in the way. And fast forward a few seconds actually after I just tried to make that hold, the hand holding onto this. Uh, you will have to do a little bit of cutting. This little peg there at the bottom of that gets a little bit in the way. Also the shape of the handle is not perfectly square. It's rectangular so one side is wider than the other and it doesn't really fit in the hand that way. So you will have to do a little bit of modification if you wanted to have this actually holding onto the rifle underneath the old armor mode like that. But I think it could definitely be done with pretty minimal work. But as far as this goes as a mobile armor, obviously it's very strange and very not very aerodynamic and again that's also part of the lore is that for this to actually be able to uh, have atmospheric flight there's another attachment that you have to add on to it this is basically just meant to fly in space like this and even still I don't really know how useful it really would be I suppose if you're doing some cruising possibly but it's a very strange transformation honestly I don't really care too much for it it's kind of interesting it's it's yeah it's very unique to be sure and it certainly doesn't look like a folded up Gundam but even the Gundam in mobile suit mode doesn't look like a Gundam either so but as typically the case I just prefer mobile suit mode and especially for this it's such a cool design such a cool unique Gundam I really like it. I'm so glad that we got this in kit form. Does it suck that it's a P Bandai kit? Yeah, that makes it a little bit more expensive, a little bit harder to get, sure, but I still think it's totally worth it. It's so cool. And like I said, it's a little bit wonky to hold that rifle, but it all depends on the pose. If you just get it in the right pose where you just kind of have it almost sort of like hiding how it's holding that, then it totally looks fine. It looks very very cool I like this a whole lot it is gonna take some painting and detailing all of that to make it look completely accurate of course I really really like this kit totally worth the price of it I think and hopefully this review has been helpful and interesting for you guys if you are looking to see more about this very cool if you're an advanced Zeta fan like me I would say you definitely have to get one so 
that is it for the review guys thanks so much for watching and leave any other further questions comments and all of that down in the comment section below i'll see you guys next time bye bye hey thanks for watching guys remember if you want to check the kit out for yourself you can head over to usa gundam store use that coupon code zakurilius10 save yourself 10 percent thanks for watching guys see you next time bye bye